this is revealed. I'm Al Letson. On January 6th, when Donald Trump incited his supporters to attack the Capitol, there were a mix of far-right symbols in the mob, from QAnon shirts to Confederate flags. There were other symbols that were also impossible to miss, Christian ones. Some people carried Bibles and wore crusader-like crosses on their chests. That day, one of the loudest voices from the Christian right, Pastor Paula White, spoke to the crowd just an hour before Trump called on them to march on the Capitol. So let every adversary against democracy, against freedom, against life, against liberty, against justice, against peace, against righteousness be overturned right now in the name of Jesus. That this is really wrapped up in race as well, like their view, it really is wrapped around the idea of white America as well. Yes, evangelicals talk often about the need to restore Christian America or that America was founded as a Christian nation and that liberals have ruined that with their various policies that go against what they believe is um, God's intention for a Christian America. So they more frequently point to things like LGBTQ rights, which they claim infringe on their religious freedom, or abortion, for which they believe is a sin for which God will punish America. But when you look at the history of the modern religious right, the founding of the moral majority in the late 1970s, which is really the movement that we're talking about here, the linkage of white evangelicalism with the Republican Party, they were motivated not by their opposition to abortion, but rather by what school desegregation meant for their private Christian schools. So there's a lot of racial grievance that's wrapped up in the formation of the religious right in the late 1970s, early 1980s. How white evangelical Christians act on their grievances depends a lot on the messages they receive from their spiritual leaders. So this is, uh, would you state your name? Quentin Bonds. Quentin Bonds and Mr. Bonds. You used to attend uh, the Without Walls Church in Tampa. Yeah, most definitely. And the pastor was Paula White. No, the pastor was Randy White. Randy White. Uh, Paula, Paula White was his wife, and she she used to speak sometimes, but the pastor was really Randy White, at least during, during the time that I was there. I think I was there, I think I started 2004, 5-ish, and I left in 2008-ish, 9-ish, or something like that. Yeah, and what? well, at that time, they were together? At, some, at one point, they, they got a divorce while I was there. Uh, I don't remember the year. If I had to guess, I would say 2000, maybe eight-ish or something like that. And was she the one that retained the position as the minister at the church there, or was did he take over? Yeah, well, he was always the pastor. He was always the pastor. He always led everything. And she would come in and, and preach sometimes, but it wasn't much. She did a lot of... Um, Pastor Paul did a lot of uh, traveling and speaking and stuff like that, but it, but it was Pastor Randy that, that really was uh, doing most of this, the work, at least up front, that, from what I could see. All right, but she had the position there, and then when they, 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 he kind of took over. I, I had it mixed, um, but regardless, so there was a report on NPR. Mm -hmm. She had done a speech at the on on uh, January sixth. At the mm -hmm. at, in DC, mm -hmm. you know we know what happened, and um, she was uh, characterized as a white supremacist, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, I went there one time with you, and it was you you know you you're would you consider yourself African American or or black? Oh yeah, totally. African American. Yeah, yeah. I'm a black man. You're from Birmingham, Alabama. Montgomery. Yeah. Montgomery. Montgomery, Alabama. And as the 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 congregation itself was it made up of black. It was pretty mixed, but I would say mostly African American. But it was pretty mixed. We had a lot of whites. We had a lot of 
Hispanic, a lot of Hispanics, probably just as many, almost as many Hispanics as blacks, a lot of, look, we had everything now. And this is what is considered prosperity church. I wouldn't say that. People have tagged us as that, but if you go to that church, they'll never come in. Come, I don't even know if they ever use the word prosperity at that church. Maybe just just like you use any word. I think I think you know from what I what I what I always seen for that church. If you call it a church, it's a restoration church. Meaning that if you've been through some things, if you used to be on drugs, or if you have been away from God, if you've been through whatever, and I wasn't perfect. It was all about restoring people. Well, was there elements of white supremacy? Not, never, never, not one time. And as a matter of fact, I would say this. Man, you know, I haven't, you know, I haven't heard a message from Pastor Paula probably in over 20, maybe 10, 15, I don't know, a long time. But the time that I did listen to her, I would never classify her as a white supremacist. Maybe something changed in the last 13 years that I'm not aware of, but I highly doubt it. Whenever Pastor Paula and Randy, regardless of whether they uh, split or not, their heart was to help people. You know, regardless of how the media tries to project things, how pe what people try to say about her, and regardless of her heart, when I know her, whenever I heard anything from her, and it wasn't just what I heard, it's the stuff they did to give you. Like, you know, they always, I mean, they sent us out to the projects in Tampa to help people, you know, like, uh, like people got violent with us out there when we was trying to pick up the kids and take them to church. Like these people had a heart for that stuff, at least when I was there. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't, I don't know them within the past 10 years, but the heart that I saw, that was not the heart that I saw. And I'm actually surprised if, that anybody would classify her, classify her as a white supremacist. I'm going to have to like check this out. <laughs> well, you, were you aware that she gave the speech uh, before the so-called insurrection thing? I'm not a, I, what, I, I'm not aware of any speech. Can you play it? Does any, can you send it to me? I, I, people keep <laughs> telling me about these speeches, but I've never really... I could send you what yeah. I have, yeah. Uh, All right, cool. But it's just, um, she had given some kind of speech, and, and that kind of, as they framed it, set the pace for what was to come next. And what did she say in the speech? Did she tell people to go storm the Capitol or something? No, I didn't. I didn't hear any of that, and I only heard a small, small uh, clip of yeah, it. Yeah, that's so. the thing with these freaking speeches. People always say, "Well, this is what happened," but then, oh well, you know, they didn't react. This is what they've been. I, I don't. This well, stuff, I mean, that's probably she was, I would like to hear it though. She was in support of, you know, the the guy Trump, obviously. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I, are you? I don't. I don't. I don't support either party. Yeah. I, I see, uh, I see ditches on both sides. I see ditches on Democrat side. I see ditches on Republican side. I see a lot of good things that could have came out of uh, Trump being president. I see, I see a lot of bad things that could have came. Same thing for the Democrats. I see a lot of bad things about the Democrats being in power. As a matter of fact, I got a, a poem on Facebook right now called uh, "GOPs and Dems," and it's talking about the things I don't like about either one. Uh. Why not? Tell me. Uh, let me see, man. Maybe I could just maybe I could just give you a snippet of GOPs and DMs. I hadn't done it in so long. Uh, here, here, here's one little, little snippet. GOPs declare an opiate crisis. Now Amy can just go to rehab when she gets caught getting high. While Vic's still in jail with intent to sell which I find highly unlikely. He just mad because they wouldn't tell. Now, would you like them in your hoods if they locked up your kids because they wouldn't tell on their cousins? So I do not like them here nor there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like them, Sam, I am. I do not like GOPs and deals. For the rest of it, you got you to gotta catch it on my Facebook page. I love you, man. That was beautiful. Oh, love you too, bro. I got one more question for you. Sure, sure, sure. You taking the vaccine? No. <laughs>